And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Can you all hear me all right? Okay. Uh, physicists have struggled for the better part of a century in the effort to develop a logical understanding of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics has been a highly successful and fruitful theory. However, from the beginning, it has been plagued by numerous unphysical and contradictory aspects, such as particles being several places at the same time, particles and waves being the same thing, uh, causality being violated, interactions occurring non-locally, and so forth. It's a rare physicist who hasn't spent at least some time pondering how these uh, contradictions might be eliminated. Most attempts to solve this problem of quantum mechanics have fallen into one of two categories. The more popular approach has been to try to reinterpret the equations, either by changing the physical picture or by changing the philosophic approach. Less popular has been the approach advocated by Einstein, um, which was to try to add something to quantum mechanics in the effort to fix it. As Einstein put it, quantum mechanics is incomplete and the problems arise due to the missing pieces. Today, most physicists maintain that neither of these approaches will prove fruitful, and I agree with this. No matter what one does in either approach, uh, one will always end up with one unphysical aspect or another. And Bell's theorem appears to prove that non-locality is a real phenomenon and therefore necessarily part of any uh, correct theory. Now these two basic approaches share a common assumption. They assume that the equations of quantum mechanics must be correct as far as they go because they work. They give, they give the right answer of what's uh, observed in the laboratory. The equations might be rearranged as part of a new interpretation, but they shouldn't be fundamentally altered because they work. The theory I'll present today is based on a new approach. I didn't come to this uh, theory by this route, but uh, by presenting it this way, it'll help to make clear why this theory is successful while the other approaches were not. What I'll demonstrate is that the equations of quantum mechanics can be altered in a fundamental way without thereby changing the mathematical predictions. There's a basic physical assumption underlying quantum mechanics which is incorrect. Physicists were able to develop a quantum mechanics which correctly predicts laboratory results in spite of the incorrect assumption. But the price paid was all the so-called quantum weirdness. When the assumption is changed, a new theory appears, one which makes the same predictions but without any of the unphysical aspects. To show how this is accomplished, I'd like to start by taking you back to the time of Einstein's explanation of the photoelectric effect. Prior to that time, light was thought to be a wave, an electromagnetic Maxwellian wave. And it was well established that light moves from an object to the observer. Light is intramissive, not extramissive. So when Einstein determined that light is somehow both a wave and a particle, physicists naturally assumed that both moved toward the observer. Both were intermissive and thus moved in the same direction as one another. And this assumption has remained part of quantum mechanics ever since, as applied to all particles, not just to photons. However, today we know that what we directly see are the particles. We never directly observe a quantum wave. The waves only appear as patterns formed through observation of numerous individual particles. If the waves and particles are separate objects, and I'll demonstrate today that they are, then it's the particles that carry the light signal, not the waves. So as long as the particles travel intramissively, the waves might go in either direction, and you still have an intramissive theory of light. Now, in fact, a simple plausibility argument suggests that one might be able to develop a theory with an extramissive or reverse wave 
that would make the same predictions as an intramissive theory. There's a standard theory in quantum mechanics known as the reciprocity theorem. Could I have slide one, please? The reciprocity theorem says that uh, for any wave scattering by uh, any object, the amplitude arriving at B from a wave emitted at A is the same as the amplitude arriving at A from an identical wave emitted at B. The scattering matrix is equal in the two directions. Now, quantum mechanics describes a particle scattering experiment by saying that the quantum wave is emitted at A, the wave scatters as a wave, and some amplitude arrives at B. The absolute value of the amplitude squared, the intensity of the wave at B, gives the probability that a particle is observed there. Now we know that a wave is involved. The wave-like patterns we see confirm this. But consider the following theory. Suppose the wave is in the environment all the time. It isn't uh, emitted as the particle or at the same time as the particle. It's always present. Waves corresponding to absolutely any particle process are always around. This is just as if a complete set of quantum states, uh, as described in current quantum mechanics, uh, actually existed as real waves. And we actually have some good evidence that something like this is the case. We're familiar with vacuum polarization, which occurs everywhere in space. Uh, we know that in particle scattering, which could occur anywhere in space, the available final states affect the outcome. Those available final states could only affect the outcome if they exist. So the very fact that quantum mechanics works at all is good confirmation that something like a complete set of quantum states does actually exist. Now the waves in this hypothetical theory are not quantum waves. They obey the Schrodinger equation, but they don't represent particles. They're just simply classical waves. When a particle travels from A to B in this theory, it does so by following a reverse wave uh, with the, the wavelength uh, given by the usual quantum relationship. The waves emitted by the detector, it uh, scatters as a wave and some amplitude arrives at A. The probability that a particle is emitted by the source is determined by the intensity, the amplitude squared, of the reverse wave at A. Once emitted, the particle follows the wave with probability one to the detector. So the probability of the overall particle process is given by the intensity of the reverse wave at A. But by reciprocity, this is equal to the intensity of the usual forward-moving quantum wave at B, which according to quantum mechanics gives the probability that you'll see a particle at B. So the reverse wave theory should make exactly the same quantitative predictions as quantum mechanics. This for absolutely any process of a particle moving from A to B. So perhaps the waves involved in quantum processes move in the opposite direction from that assumed by quantum mechanics. Now, to be clear here, by the wave emitted at B, I do not mean the time reverse of the wave emitted at A. Uh, 